Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Donalds, let's talk about him. He has claimed he is being viciously attacked after becoming involved in a dispute with the father of a Muslim soldier killed in Iraq. It's the latest in a string of controversies that the US billionaire has found himself embroiled in. Last week, Trump made sexist comments about Fox News host Megyn Kelly and in November mocked a TV reporter for having a disability. Is the most recent gaffe enough to derail him? Well, to discuss this, I'm joined uh, by the former chair of Democrats Abroad, UK Bill, uh, UK rather, Bill Bernard, and Kate Andrews, who is a spokesperson for Republicans Overseas UK. Hello to you both. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, Kate, to you, first of all, we always say when he says something controversial that, you know, he's really done it this time, but he just seems to go from strength to strength. Why is that? He does. People have been liking his challenge to the politi politically correct world that we live in today. When he said that he wanted to ban Muslims from immigrating to the U.S. temporarily, he did go up in the polls. When he said that he wanted to build a wall, he went up in the polls. And there's a chance he'll go up in the polls this time around. I'm not sure if he will. I, I do think that attacking a fallen American soldier and his family uh, is just so far past what I'd ever think we'd hear in a presidential election. Uh, but it's, it's possible he'll go up in the polls. I'm just disgusted. It's just so awful. It's appalling. And you hear these Republican voices come out yet again and dismiss Donald Trump. And I am now waiting for them to come out and dismiss him altogether. This should be the last time. This should be the last straw. We need to get behind another candidate who, or, or at least just say we are completely abstaining from Donald Trump because this is not the Republican Party. I have never known a Republican Party that wasn't anything but deeply grateful and supportive to our troops. Bill, his journey has been relatively smooth, I think it's fair to say, despite some pretty headline-grabbing comments. Um, from the other side of the fence, how do you feel about that? Well, let me address first what Kate said. I think she, like a lot of outstanding Republicans, have had the same reaction. It's swept through much of the leadership of the, of the Republican Party. And beyond that, let me say one other thing. You know, there are 300,000 Americans who live here in Great Britain who can vote, even if they've never registered the vote. They can still, they have the legal right to vote in their home state. And they ought to think now about registering and casting their vote, requesting their absentee ballot if they're already registered or registering for the first time. And they can do that by going to go from a, to votefromabroad.org, votefromabroad.org. It's very simple. But to address the larger point of whether he's gone too far, it was not just the con controversy that went on for two days over the weekend, but there was also his, his comments about the Crimea, where he seems to be unfamiliar with what's happened there. His comments about the NFL uh, games uh, con uh, conflicting with the debates, which proved to be false. He claimed he's received a letter from the NFL, and he hasn't. The NFL has said they have not. Time after time, he's done that. And I, I think much of his support is, in fact, baked in. And it's very hard to move some of those people. But on the other hand, I think there's a little kernel of doubt that is created in each of his supporters each time these kind of co shameful and outrageous comments are made. And over time, I think the cumulative effect of that is going to be telling. And I think we'll see the results in November. Kate, uh, British election campaigns are as we know, dotted with the banana skins, the Sheffield Arena rally. Um, some of the uh, older viewers, uh, me included, will remember that bigot gate uh, more recently. What about US election campaigns? Do you find similar banana skins? I think when it comes to US election campaigns, you look at a lot of false information some of the time coming from the top. Uh, it depends on the candidate and of course everyone comes up with their own statistics and every statistic uh, you know, can be manipulated to be correct in every circumstance. I think to Bill's point about what we're seeing currently in this campaign, Donald Trump is coming up with so many things that aren't backed by fact and that's deeply frustrating to me as a Republican because there's so many good facts out there I think we can use looking at the past eight years under an Obama presidency uh, and we're just 
not getting those from him. I, I do think the Democrats are equally as guilty, uh, but at the moment, you know, I have to look at my own party and I have to question over the next, I think it's 98 days going forward, you know, what? how many more scandals are we going to be looking at? How many more offensive remarks are we going to be looking at? And how long is this going to stay with the Republican Party? How long will people remember this? People, you know, people like me who become older voters, what are we going to remember looking back on this and how is it going to shape the future of the party? I'm so deeply concerned about that and I need more Republicans to start talking about it too. Bill, we've got some head-to-heads coming up, as we know. How do you think both sides will fare? Because, you know, Hillary is not without guilt on some levels. Well, I think, yes, she has high negatives, although she didn't when she left the State Department four years ago. Her ratings were sky high, and she was voted the most admired woman in the world, but the Republican scandal machine went into operation. But, but beyond that, she, it is true that when you have a country where certain portions of the country, the Rust Belt in particular, haven't enjoyed the prosperity of the last decades, really, and workers who have not seen their real wages rise in over 30 years, a problem not just in the U.S., but throughout the Western world. And you also have a large number of people who are discomforted by change, by the rate of change in the U.S. America's changing very rapidly, ethnically, economically, and in other ways. And that's always discomforting. But what does a real leader do when that happens? A real leader does not address the fears and frustrations of people and use issues to divide people. They lay out a program of progress to move forward and bring people together forward in great pro greater prosperity. And I do think at some point, while at present, Donald Trump is doing a good job of disqualifying himself, and the Democrats are happy to see that, to be sure. But on the other hand, at some point, we have to pivot to a more positive, alternative campaign of the proposals that we would put before the American people, the serious, substantive proposals. I think one of the most frustrating things for me in this election is just that we still aren't seeing that policy on either side. We're not seeing a legitimate debate. We're not seeing what either party would do for the future. We're hearing a lot of grand claims from Donald Trump about how he's going to fix everything and he's a winner. But from Hillary Clinton's side, we're hearing a lot of pandering to Bernie Sanders supporters at the moment, a very far left policy. Many things that I don't think she could actually implement on a federal level. I think the states would be pretty frustrated by some of her proposals. And we're not getting any sense of honesty. Uh, and and that is really frustrating as a voter because you want to know what you're signing up for. I do think Hillary Clinton has placed herself to say that she's going to be a third term of President Obama, but that's a dangerous game. I mean, Obama does have a lot of support out there, uh, but I think so many people who have seen their wages stagnant, as Bill mentioned, are not feeling like they can deal with another four years. We have to remember in the first place why Donald Trump is getting this support. A lot of people have just lost faith completely in the entire establishment, Republican and Democrat. They want something new. They're willing to try something bold. And it's just so deeply depressing that along with being bold, and being different, Donald Trump has come with so much negativity. And certainly Hillary is very much a part of the establishment, Bill. Well, I think the frustrations that many Americans feel, right and left, are find an outlet in the desire, which you have present in all political bodies, to cock a snook at the establishment, that those in, in power, those that are responsible, those that they hold responsible. Uh, and that's there. But I think as we near the, the election day in November, that the American people are going to take a very long, sober look at who they think is best qualified to lead the country and, in fact, to lead the free world. And that's not going to be Donald Trump. You know, I, I know Bill and I disagree on this one, uh, but I look at Hillary Clinton's record and I look at the fact that she mentioned when she was Senator of New York that she was interested in building a wall years ago before Donald Trump did. I looked at the leaked DNC emails that came out just a week ago where they talked about Hispanics as Taco Bell engagement. I look at so much of what's happening on the other side as well and I am just wondering, can we have a general election in 2016 in America where both sides can get out of, frankly, very xenophobic kinds of rhetoric and get away from all the negativity. Uh, you know, I, I know Bill thinks that Clinton is better than Trump, and he's got some good reasons for believing it, but I am not there. I don't think casting a vote in her name is much better than casting a vote in Donald Trump's name. I don't think it's better at all, actually. I just think we're looking at such a negative state of what our political process has created and what the anger and resentment in America towards the elite in Washington who haven't been listening to them has created. And then to top it all off, Trump comes out with these comments about Captain Khan and his family and you just look at it and you just I, I can't recognize it I can't believe that that's the America that we're going to be voting in in just 90 something days. Final word to you Bill as always. 
Well, I think that negativity there that was so much a part of the Cleveland, the Cleveland Convention, the Trump's convention, that was so absent from the Democratic one, which was so uplifting and so positive. And I think that's the note the campaign has to hit over the coming months. And I think that's the one that will, in the end, prevail in November. Good to talk to both of you. As always, come back soon. Thank you.